In order to learn Korean well, you need a Korean dictionary. Now that can be paper or electronic or online, and we're going to be talking about the pros and cons to each of those. First of all, paper dictionary. They're easy to use. You don't need any special training. In order to use a paper dictionary, all you need to know is the alphabetical order of Hangul, and that is Kanadara Mabasa Ajatakatapaha. It's like a song. This is the order of the letters in Hangul, and if you just learn that, you can search any word you want in Korean because they are organized by that alphabetically. They're organized. They have only exactly what you might need and nothing more. You don't need the internet. You don't need to carry around a device to access it. In fact, that's another benefit of it is that you can't get distracted and use the internet while you're supposed to just use it for a dictionary. So you can kind of, you know, go into the library without a phone, without internet or anything, and you can just study Korean with a paper dictionary. Well, and probably grammar book too. And another benefit is that dictionary paper feels really nice. I like that kind of tactile, that feeling of books when I'm studying, and maybe you do too. However, there are some cons to a paper dictionary. It takes a long time to look up words, especially if you're not really familiar with the alphabetical order of Hangul. So you have to search through the pages. Maybe you find the right section. Now you have to find the exact page, and now you have to find exactly where it is on the page. The other thing is that they're bulky. Now, this one is only English to Korean. If you get one that's going to be Korean English as well, if it's that thick, it's going to have half as much information. The other thing is that Dictionaries are not free, so they can cost, you know, 20 to 40 bucks or even more if you want to get a series. And the problem with paper printed dictionaries is that they can go out of date. It might have slang that's no longer used or some grammar that's not common anymore. And if you get a dictionary that's, you know, 50 years old, it might be completely useless now. If you want to get a paper dictionary, I cannot recommend you a specific brand or a specific type. I would say look at them yourself and decide what you would want in a paper dictionary and then pick one. Now, if it's between a paper dictionary and an online dictionary, I would pick an online dictionary. Now, there's Naver and there's also Taum. Of those two, Naver has literally everything. Taum has a little bit less, but some people prefer Taum because it's a little easier to use. The pros of using an online dictionary like Naver or Taum is that they're free and they have everything you could possibly want in a dictionary, not just definitions for words. They have dialect in them. They'll have Hanja as well as how to even write the hunter. You can find example sentences. You can also even find pronunciation for every single word in Korean. They'll have a little icon you can click to hear every word, as well as written how to pronounce it. And online dictionaries are updated all the time. So even if there's a brand new word that just came out, you know, a few months ago and people started using it, you can probably find it in an online dictionary. However, that doesn't mean that online dictionaries are perfect. One thing being that you have to have access to the internet. If you're on your phone and you don't have good signal, well, you're gonna be spending like 20 minutes just to look up one word. The other problem is that dictionaries can have sometimes way too much information. For example, if you were to just search the word cat, you might get dozens of entries, you know, maybe about a feline or a copycat. So you'd have to know how to filter through that to find the word koyangi, which is what you probably wanted. Now, maybe you're saying to me through your screen, well, Billy, there's, there's also electronic dictionaries, right? Electronic dictionaries are kind of like a middle ground between an online dictionary and a paper dictionary. So you get a lot of the benefits of a book. You get, well, it's easy to use. You can carry it around anywhere. It doesn't have too much information. They're built for studying. So they're not going to just overwhelm you with everything. You also have a lot of the benefits of an online dictionary, such as you'll get definitions. You might get hanja in there. Uh, you can get example sentences. A lot of them have pronunciation. You can push a button to play a word, but there are some cons. The first one being that they're expensive. My very first electronic dictionary that I got when I went to Korea in 2005 was about $350. Um, nowadays, you can get them from anywhere between, you know, $100 or $400, but you do have to pay some money for an electronic dictionary. The other thing is that electronic dictionaries require a lot of maintenance, so you don't want to get them wet. They can break. You don't want to drop them. You also have to frequently change their batteries. You know, the keyboard can get dirty in a year or so and it won't work. But electronic dictionaries do have some great features which 
can make them even better than an online dictionary at times. For example, some of them might have a pen that you can write on it so you can look up hanja directly without having to do it on a computer. Some of them might have music or video players built in. And a lot of them come with expansion ports so you can get additional cards to add more information or more features. Although I had an electronic dictionary and a paper dictionary, my favorite has by far been online dictionaries. Nothing matches all the information that they provide. But if I were a beginner, first time starting to study Korean, I would use online in combination with perhaps a simple book or a simple electronic dictionary, just so that I'm not overwhelmed. But what kind of dictionary do you use and why? Why do you like it? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again next time. 그럼 다음에 또 봐.